49ers making headlines this week by hiring Michigan associate head coach Biff Pogey as its next head coach. Pogey replaces Will Healy, who Charlotte, remember, fired last month after a 1-7 and seven start to the season. Now, who better to break down the hire with than one of the most well-known names in college football at Fox Sports and the Athletics, Bruce Feldman. Now, Bruce, you broke the news on Pogey, so let us know who Charlotte's getting. We've seen the cutoffs. We hear that everybody <laughs> loves this guy, but tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, I think the biggest thing to know with him is the impact he's had for Jim Harbaugh in Michigan the last two years has been really remarkable. You got to remember, going into 2021, Michigan had won two games. Jim Harbaugh took a massive pay cut. He was on one of the hottest seats in the country. Since then, they are 21-2 and two and 15-1 and one in the Big Ten. They won the Big Ten title last year. And having spent about a month around the, around the Michigan program, I'd ask people what really changed. And one of the biggest factors they'd point to was how Biff Pogey, who's really been Jim Harbaugh, one person referred to him as his consigliere, <laughs> uh, kind of the big brother, Whatever it has been, he really helped change the culture of the program in a really significant way. And so the story I did for The Athletic last week really got into the details of how it worked behind the scenes, not just coaching the coaches, but really, you know, being somebody that everybody in the program, players included, have leaned on. And so I, you know, as the story was starting to come together, Everybody I talked to would rave about the impact this guy had, so much so that I started asking people, hey, what do you think he would be like as a college head coach? Because he was he was extremely successful as a head coach in high school and to a man, and I'm not just talking Jim Harbaugh, I'm not just talking about other guys on staff. Nick Saban said, I think he would be a phenomenal hire if somebody gave him the chance to be a college head coach because at the end of the day, the most important thing is you are the CEO of a college football program and how do you manage people and how do you communicate and those are things his skills are off the charts organizationally and by the way you know as we we kind of build it as the most interesting man in coaching this guy also made a fortune as a hedge fund manager for you know the last 30 years so he was never even taken a salary before and i think when you have somebody who has that kind of big picture perspective on everything I think it really is a very intriguing hire for Charlotte because I know there were some other uh, FBS programs that really were interested in him as well. In a more serious note, though, his name, where does it rank in all time <laughs> names in sports? Man, it's up there now. I mean, just the combination of the names. I had actually asked him early on when I, you know, like maybe a week after I started talking to him for this story was where did that name come from? And he goes, well, actually, my parents let my older brother give me the nickname. Huh. And initially, he wanted to call me Spike. So Spike Pogey made top, wow. made top Biff Pogey. But the parents nixed it. He's been Biff ever since. And, you know, he is beloved by so many people. Like, it was interesting to kind of hear about how the search process went at Charlotte. And the thing that I think people came to realize, and certainly the AD did, was once you start to kind of, the more you get around him, the more wowed you are. I'm not surprised that he blew it out of the water in the interview process. Um, he's just really different than most of the guys who people are interviewing for head coaching jobs. So let's talk really quickly. We know that Biff is obviously going to come in and replace Will Healy, but another former head coach in the Charlotte market, at least, was Coach Matt Rule, who might be looking to go back to the college ranks. Have you kind of heard anything about Matt Rule maybe being interested going back into college? And is, is there maybe a team that, that you see him fitting well with? Well, I know that Nebraska has some real interest in him. Look, and why wouldn't they? Obviously, it didn't work with the Panthers, but he was wildly successful taking Baylor when Baylor was in complete disarray, and he turned them around in a big way. He did a really good job as well as at Temple. Uh, he's a guy who is seen as more of a Big Ten guy. I mean, he went to Penn State. I don't think he has really any connections to Nebraska, but for the candidates they're looking at, I think Matt Rule would be the splashiest hire. Now the question is, as you guys well know, he's still going to make a fortune from yeah. his time with the Panthers, and that's going to go on whether he takes a head coaching job or not. Um, 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he sat out this coaching, you know, carousel season and maybe kind of gathered himself, maybe did some TV. Um, I don't know. Like, this is not a it, – <laughs> It's a good job, but I feel like there may be better jobs out there if he waits a year from now because, look, Nebraska has really struggled to get some traction. The expectations are really high there, and I don't know if he if he sees it as, hey, I, I really want to jump back in, so let me take this job or let me see what else is available a year from now because, as we know, he's not hurting for money at this point. All right, very quickly, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, they're in the playoffs now. Name one team that kind of gets in there by the end. And where do you fall on the playoff expansion? I'm an eight-team guy. I need eight. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a with you on that. I think expansion is important. I, I, would, I would expect we will get to 12 probably. Um, but I think – the team to keep an eye on is Tennessee. Yeah. They already have a win over Alabama. They blew out LSU in Baton Rouge. They they could sit there at 11-1, not winning a division because Georgia will win their division. And then Georgia beats LSU. And I think Tennessee is sitting there. They're going to need some help maybe from TCU to get knocked off. TCU unbeaten, winning the Big 12. I think that would be enough for them. If they lose, then all of a sudden here's Tennessee sitting there at 11-1 with two really good wins. I think the Tennessee Vols has, have a decent shot to, to sneak in the playoff. Yeah, certainly going to be interesting as we get closing in on college football. Bruce, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you, guys.